but there's some scenes that actually go into an even deeper interdimensional hypothesis. Sorry, my dog is going nuts. Talk about how ridiculous my hair looks in the movie. You have great questions. These yeah. are good. We have to actually think about it. This movie is designed to support multiple correct theories. Are we doing spoilers? All right. Hi. Uh, first of all, uh, I wanted to let you know that I absolutely loved your movie when I watched it back in Sundance and I rewatched it again and I really enjoyed it all over again. So my first question to you is that, like, what is the key to making a good conspiracy uh, theory movie? Because throughout the movie, I was like pausing and Google searching, like, is this true? And I just realized that it's all very convincing lies. So, so what's the key to that? Oh, good question. Um, I mean, I guess one thing was was just going forward from a character perspective. That is, in terms of we we fleshed out these guys, Levi and John, and a lot of those things were inspired by just trying to make them as different from ourselves as possible, and what we might be interested to to perform as. Um, but really, it's not like it's not like we had the uh, the board up with all the conspiracy theories mapped out or, or anything there was a there was a treatment that essentially expressed the same thing that's in the movie but i think it, the, the trick was was letting the characters guide that that sort of web of conspiracy um as opposed to as opposed to trying to um start with plot mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um yeah they uh uh the, the good news is, is about the, the conspiracy that's happening that the characters believe is happening in the movie is one large long-winded conspiracy as opposed to a whole bunch of different ones they do end up interconnecting in many ways and sometimes they figure out that they're down a dead end and back up a little bit uh but the um uh the conspiracy in the movie is you know 10 percent based on any kind of uh historical record and 90% made up. And uh, and I think that the fact that it's just cohesive as just one long run on sentence, essentially, uh, is what really does it. That said, the conspiracy was actually even more intricate uh, and it just had to get edited down for, uh, for pacing reasons. But there's some scenes that actually go into an even deeper interdimensional hypothesis. This city was designed according to this tablet. Maybe these gateways to other dimensions are actually all around us. And and one more thing that I uh, kept wondering about is that like your whole filmmaking makes it look like it's a very easy process. Like even you are called like DIY filmmakers. But when you're watching it, you see that there is a lot of amount of like uh, editing, like there is a lot of uh, visual effects special effects and even in terms of the story like you see these two guys kind of being chaotic and catching up lot of it and just running with it but there is a lot of uh, like uh, preciseness to it so what is the uh, whole uh, process behind making chaos look like that you have great questions these yeah. are good we have to actually think about them <laughs> well this answer is probably kind of boring it's probably just a ton of prep time and um, uh, there's oftentimes the presumption in independent film, especially if the, the performances are understated in any way or meant to be sort of conversation or natural. There's a presumption in independent film that, that there's a lot of um, improvisation going on or just in general being more spontaneous. And, and for us really movies are kind of made in the months prior before going to photography and getting to photography is just executing that. Um, so that probably helps with, with, um, with, with keeping, keeping the chaos and getting out of control. That's kind of inherent to any film set. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it, it feels pretty crystalline in our heads before we head into production, uh, because of all that prep. So, so, and and the main like the plot twist of this movie, uh, let's say without giving any spoilers, like it's the recreations which these two characters are doing. But uh, like, was there in any point while crafting that twist that you thought that uh, this will be a little too much for the audience because they are already dealing with this rabbit hole within rabbit hole, and now they're going to question everything that they're watching. 
Yes, uh, we definitely were uh, building in paths out in the editing room in case that what we were doing became too complicated for the audience. And very fortunately, it seems like it's just right on the cusp of uh, comprehensibility in a good way. Uh, and it's always on a razor's edge in that way when you're building a new kind of sci-fi mythology. There's there's nothing you can do about it. You have to go into rules and, and all of that. Um, but for us, for example, there is a line. Are we doing spoilers? Yeah, yeah sure, sure. No problem. Uh, there's, there's a line where one of the characters uh, that the main characters are interviewing says, well, why did you play yourselves in the recreations, as, as you mentioned? That line is cuttable. And you could... Uh, you could actually just lose that whole idea of them actually recreating some of the things they're doing. But we really like in a movie that's about knowing what a good source is and who to trust and uh, outside of yourself and what kind of information sources you actually build your life and beliefs upon. Uh, we thought that that was actually a really good way of um, calling into doubt the sincerity of the narrator of the movie. So, and and I have a personal conspiracy theory about your movie, uh, which I have been like pondering about since I first watched it. Is that is this movie a giant murder cover up by John? Because he makes this elaborate uh, mockumentary where he actually like and at the end of the day uh, Levi is dead, and when we first see John, he has blood all all over his shirt and everything, and uh, like Levi con constantly pokes him about his religious uh, angle. So is this a large murder cover up? Uh, well, I mean, we get such a good theory. We don't want to tell you it's not true, and then if we said it was true, we'd be giving away the movie. Yeah, uh, this movie is designed to support multiple correct theories. Uh, uh, <laughs> they're they're. They're as correct as we know they are too. So, and and do you in a, in a way like while watching the movie also like do you think that it itself becomes a commentary about the whole process of filmmaking as well because we see how uh, the one character is directing the other or how you are manipulating the audience as well. So does it is that was that intention or was that just part of the process? I wasn't really an intentional commentary on filmmaking. But though it's like very, got that several times, it's like easy to see it that way. Um, but what was interesting though was, was playing two people who are just starting to make their first film, being people that have been doing it for, for 20 years or whatever it's been. Um, that was interesting, but being, it's hard to figure out like what, what are the things how would you express yourself if it were day one? And what would you be able to do and not do? That was kind of an interesting thing, but it really wasn't like an intentional, like we're gonna have a commentary about the process of filmmaking or especially not our own process. Yeah, there's, there's a little bit of a conversation being had about the responsibility of what you put out in the world and how you do it. And I think that, you know, our, our preferred medium of course being film, but you know, there's conversation on podcasts and uh, Quora.com and all of that. YouTube. Uh, yeah, yeah. And so even as a science, even as a uh, science fiction author, um, you can still have some kind of responsibility about what people end up believing. We're going to need some kind of visuals. Or people won't believe it. Like now you have done a lot of indie projects and now you have also done some big budget projects. So which informs which one? Like, do you think that all, you have done such a plethora of indie projects that all the high resource items feel easy to uh, maneuver? Or since you have done a big budget projects, does the indie projects look easier to maneuver? Well, they both inform each other quite a bit. And um, you can take lessons you learned and apply it to the other one. Uh, it's all extremely helpful. Um, it all remains no matter what uh really challenging but that's kind of one of the virtues of, of filmmaking where it's like oh yeah almost no matter what you do um every day it feels like day one in some ways and, and and like what are some of your like if i can ask what are some of your best uh or favorite conspiracy theory movies of all time you can include your own as well <laughs> i uh i really love pie i think pie gets my uh 
gets me going. And you know what's funny is uh, another one. I actually saw it after we released this movie. All right, Sundance. I saw it only a few months ago. Was Under the Silver Lake. That movie um, is uh, very much in our spirit, and and they would make kind of an interesting double feature, especially yeah. Los Angeles conspiracy theory movies. <laughs> I think I think even brand new cherry flavor is also a kind of a triple feature if anybody wants to make it. I think your movie uh, Under the Silver Lake and brand new cherry flavor. It's on Netflix. Oh, I haven't seen that. You've seen it, though, right? Yeah. No, I just find it was crazy. I haven't seen Pie. I haven't seen Under the Silver Lake. I haven't seen the movie you said, and I'm literally racking my brain trying to think if I ever seen a conspiracy theory movie. I've seen clips from JFK, but I haven't <laughs> seen all of JFK. Yeah. Um, the Big Lebowski is kind of a good one. If that counts. Oh, so the, the, the Big Lebowski counts. I've seen the Big Lebowski. And what are some of the wildest uh, LA stories that you can share with us publicly? Like which, which, like some of the stuff that you say in in your movie. Like what are some of the wildest LA oh. stories that make it magical or make it like uh, spooky? Yeah, the story about the coyote actually was true, and it happened to both of us. We were we were out at one of our favorite little happy hour places, and on one of the most busy roads. Uh, in Los Angeles, Sunset Boulevard, right on the strip. For some reason, all the cars just stopped coming. You get one of those very rare moments of total traffic silence, which is already eerie on its own. And then a coyote just doesn't even run, just trots down the street. And we all just stop talking and stare at it. And we and, uh, and it pauses and looks at us and kind of gives its little like coyote smile and then runs up the street next to Cabo Cantina. And uh, we will, it was so memorable that we put it in the movie. And it does actually make you feel like the city has something uh, special and, and reverberating underneath the surface. And, and since you have done so many uh, iterations of horror and sci-fi, like what do you think uh, attracts you to this particular genre? Like if, if you have to, if, to, if you have to uh, bring in a non-fan to your whole filmography, what will you say that? What is the most attractive feature of horror sci-fi? The opportunity for innovation. Um, it's, it, has, it's, it, it has a little bit more potential for that, maybe, than other genres. Sorry, my dog is going nuts. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the potential for innovation and, uh, and the potential to be able to give a sort of roller coaster thrill ride without necessarily needing to have, you know, you don't necessarily need to have like the biggest celebrity in in the world that yeah. you just do it with the right story. And since you conceptualized kind of this movie uh, within the pandemic and you, you released it like when the pandemic was kind of decreasing and now that we are kind of in between a kind of normalcy, like, do you think uh, it will always be relevant because there's enough material like in terms of horror and sci-fi that it will always be relatable no matter when people watch it? Yeah, I would like to think this movie doesn't feel like or have anything to do with the pandemic, to be honest. Uh, it's definitely still uh, a version of a chamber piece, but so was our first movie, and there was no pandemic during Resolution. Um, and uh, and it, doesn't, it wasn't ever designed to have anything to do with a zeitgeist or a feeling that we were feeling at the time. Um, it was, it was a, a story that has... Uh, themes that we've actually always explored or always wanted to explore. So um, I like to think this movie, it would be different, but but some version of this same movie would still exist whether or not there was a pandemic. Right. And my uh, final question uh, to both of you is that like, what is one uh, opinion or takeaway that you want audiences to have after watching something in the dark? Oh, I, I guess you know, we always want people to leave the theater talking about the movie. That's sort of for us the, the meter of success, whether the movie is successful or not. Um, and just pick one conversation to have on this movie as I leave is uh, uh, the virtues of speculation versus belief and how speculation and sitting around theorizing with people from this beautiful bonding experience that says so much about us as human beings and how belief and cross that over into potentially something uh, more nefarious. But I suppose that's just one of many conversations people could have leaving this movie. You could also you know, talk about how ridiculous my hair looks in the movie, uh, 
talk about what else? I, I hope that uh, if there's any young filmmakers that watch the movie, um, one is that they make movies with their friends and not uh, people like John and Levi. But, uh, but hopefully it does sort of inspire the idea to go grab a camera and make a movie um, and, and no matter what the limitations. All right. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, I, I wish you all the best uh, for uh, Something in the Dirt. And I wish you all the best for all the upcoming projects that you're going to make. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much.